Okay, hello. Welcome to this presentation. I will tell something about um, how you can avoid core hacks because they are evil. Um, first of all, uh, this is my um, uh, overview of the presentation. I won't have time for the extra fields and uh, overriding core classes, uh, but anyway, it's too te technical, so it no, doesn't matter. Uh, if you have questions, um, you can ask. If it's a bit long, I uh, try to ask them or answer them at the end of the session. So first of all, uh, who in the audience uses core hacks? One, only one. <laughs> no, <laughs> two, <laughs> three, four. Um, uh, sorry, I, I, I asked the wrong question because it's a bit. It's not really smart to use core hacks. Uh, who uses core hacks? No one. <laughs> Well, I do sometimes. Um, anyway, Joomla is uh, open source software. It's uh, a GNU GPL, which means you can change anything. But it doesn't, matter, it doesn't matter that you should change anything. Uh, you can change Joomla, you can change third party extensions, and everything you change, I consider as a core hack, if you change it in the code. The disadvantage of core hacks is when you upgrade, um, you might overwrite your core hacks. It happened to me a lot of times. And of course, um, third party extensions rely on Joomla source code. And if you change things in it, uh, you might break those components. So this is an example about the core hack. Joomla's uh, contact form, it's really nice, really short. Um, when you use it, it will have an IP address in the source code of the, of the message, but it will be uh, the IP address of your uh, web server. So it doesn't say anything about the visitor. If you want to have an um, IP address in your uh, email, you have to create a core hack. In this case, I opened um, uh, the controller of the contact form, which is called components com underscore contact controllers contact.php, and I changed just one uh, line of code, which has a string mail, which means it's uh, an object uh, set uh, body, and I added some stuff to it to include the IP address of the visitor. So when somebody visits my website, uses the form, I have this nice IP address, and this is of course my local IP address. I still uh, use uh, IP4 instead of IP6. So it's my uh, home address. However, it only works till the next uh, Joomla upgrade. So now I would like to discuss six alternatives to core hacks because two are too difficult and I don't have time. Mm. Template overrides. Who uses template overrides? Oh, marvelous, marvelous, marvelous. Okay, so I will just mention it a bit. Um, in Joomla, uh, you have a template, and the template arranges the layout uh, where uh, what component, I mean the component area, and also the modules, where the modules are uh, placed. Uh, every module and every component has a sort of um, template output. It's an HTML output, and you can change that in the component, but it's a core hack. If you copy this uh, part of a component or a module, and you put it in your template, um, you can change it over there, and it will survive an upgrade. So, for instance, uh, there is a, a module called Latest News. It will display uh, the latest news, uh, or the latest articles on your website. And let's assume you have a customer and they have a request. Like, they want to have the date included, because it's nice to have the latest news, but it's even more nicer to have a date with it. So, this is what you can do. You have your template, in my case, my template is called your underscore template. I created an HTML um, folder. I created a folder for my module that I want to overwrite, which is called mod underscore articles underscore latest. And then I went to the module, and in the module I copied the default PHP. I copied it to my new folder in the template override. After that, I wanted to know if the template override worked. So if you do something like that, just press a couple of buttons, save, and look at your website if you see funny text on your website. 
If so, just get rid of it and you know it's working. If it's not working, maybe you made a mistake in the name or something. Um, so when it's working, um, the first thing, or the second thing you do is you have to know which variable you have to use. In this case, I use PHP, print underscore R, which will print all uh, uh, the data which is in the item object on the screen. And well, this is something you get. You can make it nicer if you do a, a, a echo pre and echo end of pre uh, tag, but I didn't mind. But here you see created and it has a date in it. So every article has a created date and it's also in the module when you use it in the latest article uh, module. So to create um, uh, a date with it, to have the date in your, with your title, just add item uh, uh, arrow created just before the title and you will get something like this. <coughs> uh, okay, customer was not happy. He didn't like the layout. I can understand. So you can do something about that. What I did was uh, I used a, a set config and set user. So uh, I could use the uh, website's uh, default time zone, but also the visitor's default time zone. And I took those into account and it created a sort of formatted date and it, with this. And well, my sheets will be online afterwards, so you don't have to write anything down. This is some, somewhat better, not really good, but somewhat better. Only to display that you can uh, change formats, etc. So this is nice if you are uh, the administrator of a website and you have FTP access. But what if your customers don't have FTP or, or it's more, maybe too difficult? What you can do with Joomla, you can create alternative layouts. And alternative layouts are actually sort of additions. I mean, sort of template overrides extended. So you can create multiple template overrides and those multiple template overrides are uh, uh, selectable by a website administrator. So they don't have to use FTP anymore because you did it for them. There are four types of overrides. In uh, this presentation I will only describe the module. Um, what you have to do is uh, you just create a new template override with a new name. So, uh, for instance, I had this default.php, I uh, created a template override uh, a few moments ago uh, to add the date in it. So what you can do is just rename it to layout with date. Don't use underscores, underscores will not work uh, with a template, over, uh, template overrides and alternative layouts. But if you just give it another name, um, in the modules you have the advanced options under the parameters. parameters. And instead of default, you now have layout with date in it. And I have default because it's the default of the template, uh, of the, sorry, of the module. But I also have layout with date, which I just created. But you can create more of those. So maybe you have a module and you want to have a ordered list or unordered list. So you can create different uh, variants of your uh, output. Um, Language overrides. Who uses language overrides? Ah, marvelous, marvelous. Great. Hey. Um, language overrides are marvelous because in the past, sometimes my customers wanted to have the language labels in Joomla changed, like read much, more, read more. Maybe they wanted to have something like read much more. Uh, well, you could do in the uh, in the files. Just change it, and hope. Hopefully, uh, the next upgrade wouldn't override it because then. You lost it, because it was a core hack. Um, since 1.6, so maybe since 2.5, you have the um, language files with the overrides option. So in extensions, language manager, it, it says overrides. And if you want to have uh, uh, read more, and, and you, you create a new one, and which should be read much more, you just press new, and then you have a sort of option to find constants or to find um, the values of it. In this case, I want to have read more, read space more. So I use the value, and it will show me all the constants with the translations of it. And I just picked one, 
I made uh, read much more. I did save and it was in the list. Content come, uh, come content read more, and the uh, uh, translation of it. Um, this is the result with the true waffles. I have said read more, read more, and now it says read much more. Um, there is one thing about this. I was uh, with someone else, and we were looking at this stuff, and we were just showing uh, the things we knew uh, about Joomla and the backend and language overrides and how we use this kind of stuff. And I was thinking, well, I, I have this uh, uh, third-party extension called XMap. It's a nice extension, which I use a lot. And I thought, well, maybe I want to have it like Peter's uh, uh, sitemap in the backend. So Peter's sitemap manager, just for fun. <coughs> and I was looking at it. And uh, uh, the person I was with was also looking at it, and we couldn't find anything. We couldn't translate it to another language. And then after five minutes, we both did like this. Uh, we looked at each other, yes, we didn't install any third-party language pack for this. So when you want to translate something, uh, you should make sure that you have installed the language pack for it. The Joomla core already has the language for it, but if you install third-party languages, uh, third-party extensions, install the language for your language which you want to override, otherwise there is nothing to override. Uh, you can also do it directly, I mean, uh, the backend is nice, but if you have a long list of maybe 5, 10, 20, you don't want to uh, do it by hand, you just use it, put it in this override uh, file. Something else which you can use to avoid core hacks is plugins. Um, for instance, I had this customer, uh, they are in the chemical uh, branch of business, and they have formulas. In this case, I just use H2O because I didn't understand any of the formulas they, they use on their website. So, if you add a formula, like uh, with, if you add HTML uh, code in your uh, titles of the article or in the menu items, it will break, it doesn't work. You can do it in the article itself. So here it says water is H2O, but the other two will be just be H2O without sub, uh, how do you say it, sub? Sub something? Subscript. Subscript, yes. Um, so I used re-replacer. Uh, it's from Peter van Westen, he's from uh, the Netherlands. Uh, he's better known as No Number and he has excellent extensions. Uh, one of the extensions I really like is the re-replacer, because you can replace anything you like in the output of Joomla. So, what I did, I uh, uh, did some sort of uh, yeah, uh, core, I mean some sort of hack thing. Instead of using uh, HTML, I created my own tags. Uh, hashtag, sub, hashtag. And I used re-replacer to change those with the real uh, HTML. Uh, uh, smaller than and larger than. So now I can do uh, water is H2O. If I do the menu item, I write it like this. And this is the output, like here. Um, you have to make sure of two things. If you do something like that, check the alias of your article, because it will have funky things in it. Remove those. Uh, also, don't use it in your page title, because in the page title, uh, it doesn't look good. So in the page title and the alias, you have to do it manually. And just do, uh, don't use the formula, but write it like this. Um, another method of overriding Joomla's core without uh, core hacking is uh, cloning things. Who programs, modules, extensions? Great, nice, nice. Okay. Um, so if I run into a problem with a component or a module, mostly modules, sometimes I clone those. For instance, I have this customer, they have these like everyone else, but I created an extension, uh, some car evaluation extension. Um, the customers put something in in the front end, in the back end they manage it, but they have to go to components and choose my component. I want to be helpful, so what I did was I created a new icon. You have this module called Quick Icons, it's an administrator module. I just <coughs> core hacked it with my own stuff. Um, every time I update their website, they phone me, Peter, uh, the component you wrote for us, it's not working anymore. 
because the icon is not there anymore. Uh, so I explained, yeah, you can go to extensions, I mean to components and select it yourself, but I have to, I, I just have to uh, recreate it everything, every time. So if you want to add it, I looked at um, the template uh, file of, of this um, module, but it says something like this. So you already have these buttons, and this has all the uh, buttons and everything in it. So it's not really possible to use a template override. Well, maybe you can, but I, I, I chose another option. I just copied the module. I copied the module mod underscore quick icon and put it two behind it. I did it everywhere. For instance, the names of the, the files, I renamed those to quick icon two. I did it in the references in the, in the code. So where it says quick icon, I said quick icon two, quick icon two and also in the XML file. And this is really nice. In the past, you had to create a package of your macho and install it using the installer. Uh, since I think it's 1.6 or so, you have the discover function in Joomla. So you go into the backend, extensions, uh, and then extension manager, of course, discover, and then you find everything which is not installed, but has an XML file, and it's somewhere in your uh, folder structure of modules, plugins, or uh, templates, I think, and mm -hmm. components. So in this case, I tried to install this uh, mod quick icon 2. It worked, and then I had to uh, add it to my module manager. Very important, it's an administrator module, so you have to go to filter for the administrator. Uh, then I chose this new module, I named it my own uh, quick icons, and I said position is icon. However, you see something like this. I didn't really bother to change the stuff for the, for the language files. It was just a quick workaround. But if you want to do it nicely, you also uh, should change those references. Oh, error. Yeah, there's something wrong, I forgot something. Uh, so I opened the helper file and also I had to change the uh, uh, stuff over there. Um, when it worked, the override worked, I had to um, add some array with some stuff in it and now I have this nice new button in the back end. So I just cloned it and changed it like I wanted to have it. And I disabled the original plug uh, module. So um, these are nifty tricks, but sometimes you have other things like module, uh, components. Um, so I had this customer, uh, an advertising company, and they bought a subscription or they bought an extension uh, for about something to do with jobs. And I wanted to have some changes in it. Uh, it was a commercial uh, extension and I didn't have to code, so I asked a friend of mine who is also uh, into Joomla and programming stuff, um, and together we worked on this assignment. Uh, we had a Skype uh, meeting and we looked at the code and we looked at the code and oh, it was horrible, the code was really horrible. Uh, we were making a bit fun, you know, and we were looking for a solution to change the code. But we didn't, we didn't want to use a, a core hack because, well, we both hate core hacks. But it was a bit difficult, so what you, can you do with st stuff like that? For instance, um, Let's assume we go back to the, um, uh, to the start of this presentation where I described the core hack I did with um, uh, com component, the contact component. So what we did is this, something like this. Um, you have the comp contact component. Uh, you can't use a template override because it doesn't have to do anything with the template to, include, uh, to send the email. You can clone it, but it's really big and I don't want to do that. I don't know any plugin that can change something to uh, send a PDF with email or, so, or an IP address. So we added our own controller. What you do, you create, you copy a controller which, which you want to modify and you gave it a new name. The, the second thing you have to do, you create a language override and you just copy the original uh, uh, form and you changed the hidden fields in the form to trigger your own override uh, a controller. So this is what I did with the core hack in the ComContact. 
I create, uh, first I created a, a template override, the contact, uh, com contact and then the contact form. Uh, I copied default underscore form and in it you have this kind of code in the end and the hidden task contact.submit it will trigger the contact controller of the contact component. So I changed the contact in my own controller. So uh, what I did, I copied Joomla's contact controller and I named it my own controller. So now uh, the contact form will use uh, the template override will which will trigger my own controller. I had to change some stuff in it like the controller name. Uh, I had to change some other stuff in it like uh, I had to specify a contact model otherwise it would look for something different. And I just did the same thing which I um, described using the core hack. This is the core hack but on my own <laughs> controller now. Uh, this is the result and this will uh, survive a Joomla update. Um, I think this is one a bit too technical, so I'll just mention it. Um, Joomla has extensions uh, and you have plugins and with plugins you can uh, uh, extend things like for instance you have the com user and there is a user plugin which you can enable and you can then ask for more uh, details of someone who described or who wants to register to your component or uh, website. Uh, you can use this, uh, creating a profile plugin, but you can also uh, do stuff with the com contact, uh, content. So you can create contacts, uh, extra fields on it, uh, where you can store data that you can use in other ways. Uh, there was one problem I had when I tried this with Joomla 2.5. Uh, it was, I think, 2.5.10 10 or something, uh, I had to do a core hack uh, to listen, to let it listen to my uh, plugins. <coughs> so, okay, uh, another thing is uh, core classes. Uh, Joomla has all these kinds of classes it uses um, to do nice things. If you want to change something, um, most of the things is you extend the class. For instance, if you create um, a component, you extend uh, classes of Joomla and there you build your uh, stuff in. But if you want to have stuff in all the things you build, maybe you want to do it in the core class, but you, won't, you don't want to do it in the core class. But you can do it differently. Um, it's described by uh, Mark Dexter and Lewis Landry in uh, this book. But you can also find it on the documentation website. In short, uh, you can create a system plugin the system plugin will uh, uh, require once your own code and you give it the same name as a Joomla class. So when Joomla tries to load its own class and it sees that it's already loaded, <coughs> it doesn't load, it doesn't overload it. So your code will be loaded. So this is how you can do it. It's too technical to, to get into details. But uh, if you look for a solution, maybe you have a sort of, uh, how do you say it, starting point. So. I hope that uh, now you don't want to do core hacks anymore. Am I right? Okay, but you have customers, maybe, and those customers might have uh, uh, another developer. For instance, I was telling you about this um, using your own controller. What I didn't tell was how it ended. Um, my friend and I, we created uh, um, our, our, our own controller, did nifty stuff to create the PDF, which was sent to an email address, and it worked. So I contacted my developer, I mean uh, my uh, customer, and I told him, yeah, we have a solution. And uh, by the way, um, I noticed that there is an uh, update for the extension you, you bought. Uh, so I recommend updating it. And then they said, no, uh, we can't. Because we, when we came to you, uh, before that, we hired someone else and he did some core hacks. <laughs> so that's why the code looked horrible, I think. <laughs> um, so if you have customers or if you have core hacks and you want to restore those. Um, also, if you have a hacked website, because on a hacked website, you can consider it as changing in the core code. You can do stuff like this. Uh, first of all, um, core hacks, most of the core hacks you do, you don't document, I think. Most people don't document those th things. And to find core hacks or to find uh, uh, hacked files in a Joomla website, 
it's uh, difficult because you have to look in many files, many files. Uh, fortunately, there is a nice tool called diff. Who knows diff? Okay, who do uses it? Uh, do you use it on the command line or uh, with a GUI? Okay, yeah, I use, I use a GUI as well. I have Linux and I use Melt. But uh, if you use Windows, you have uh, WinMerge, which is excellent. So what you have to do, first create a backup of your website. Um, you have to install this backup on another machine, for instance, your local machine. So you can use uh, uh, XAMPP or something. You put your uh, uh, hacked or correct website over there and you copy it. So you have two instances. One is called uh, with hack and the other is without hack. The without hack is now still the same as the with hack, but you download Joomla and you unzip it. You download third party extensions and unzip those. And you overwrite all the files in the site without hack. So you will have one site with the hacked files and one with the origi original files. You mm, can then use a, a, a diff tool to compare those. However, uh, if you have a hacked website, um, you might also have some new files in it, which are not an original. You will see those, but you have to be careful with those. So what I did, I had this uh, website I used a diff tool, uh, my diff tool is called Melt, and I just uh, used these, I, I compared these two. You have to press the directory comparison, otherwise you will only uh, compare two files. So with directory comparison, you have all those files, like this, and then it says something like, oh, uh, in my uh, controllers I have contact.php, and it's changed because it's red, and here uh, I don't have a file, and here there is a file. So these are the differences. Um, to see the differences in the contact.php, uh, you just double click it and you look at it and you can si find something like, oh, someone add some IP address, is server remote address in it. Hmm, not really smart. <laughs> so you can re re repair it. So uh, this is how you can uh, do, core, uh, do changes in Joomla without using core hacks. Um, so in short, a core hack is a modification of a, a, a core file. Um, you have alternatives to core hacks. Sometimes you, you have to do a core hack, but uh, you should document it. Um, there are <coughs> tools to use when you have uh, core hacks to undo those core hacks. However, something I didn't say, well, first of all, we don't do core hacks anymore, but um, the alternatives I just described are nice. But if something changed in the Joomla core and you have a template override, the change won't be in your uh, uh, override. So sometimes maybe you have to compare those. I think this is it within time. Are there any questions? Yes? Can I take you back to the template overrides? Yeah. Some extensions have quite complex um, views that split across many files in Quite, often, quite a few directories. Yeah. Um, now, using the full URL of the page, you can see what the view is, but quite often that doesn't actually drive you to the, the actual file that you need. Is there an easy way of finding that without lots of searching? Uh, well, I use an IDE. Uh, I use NetBeans, but Eclipse or Firestorm or Aptana or something else is, is good as well. Um, and what I do, 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 I look at the core code. Um, sometimes I look at language labels because they are quite yeah. unique. Yeah. So I see some, something on the website. I go to the Joomla backend. I look for uh, the variable, I mean the value, and then I see what the constant is. And then I copy the constant. I go to my IDE. I search all my files automatically uh, for this constant. Then I see where it's used, and I know, oh, in this page, in this page, I can do something. First of all, I would uh, change the original file. I would do a core hack, just type something. Just to see if it works. Yeah. yeah, and then I know it's the, good, the, the file I want to use. I uh, restore it, and then I do the core, uh, not the core hack, uh, the template override. Sure. But there are some changes in that. Um, I'm 
I'm trying to think of an extension I've come across recently that, that does this. Um, in fact, I think the Kinder subscriptions is one. But within their views, they hold all of their views in a number of subfolders. Yeah. Um, and in their particular extension, when you come to put a, a template override, you have to ignore all of those folders. So okay. You're actually changing the structure. Um, so you have a lot of messing about to, you know, does this work? No, it doesn't. Try it somewhere else. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, is there any, there's no debug ability to be able to see exactly which file is. Not that I know of. Well, you can maybe use the debug of Joomla, but. You can print the list of all files in PHP. Just edit core, core index to PHP and use uh, printer. Uh, print underscore error. Uh, oh. There is a function in PHP get required uh, files. If you space all files in PHP, and actually you can search by select, slash templates. It wouldn't call slash duties. Error though. Yes. It, 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 it returns a list of all files included and required by PHP in array. Okay. You can print <coughs> it and try to find uh, this file by searching for run, run, the slash com underscore the component slash use. And uh, another way, usually, when you have any specific or quite unique CSS, uh, CSS ID or CSS, uh, HTML yeah. ID, yeah, some specific HTML code, of code. You can also search for this code in all files in your project, and you will find it. Okay. Uh, so, so the question was, uh, uh, how can we find those? And uh, I just heard an answer. Use uh, print underscore R. Uh, and uh, use the get includes files. I didn't know that, so thank you very much. Mm. There is also get uh, declared classes. Well. Okay, uh, so there is uh, something, I got a remark from the audience, uh, there is also get required classes or? Well, it's, uh, well, it's yeah. a very useful function, yeah. get declared classes. Okay, so I, I repeat you because then that's on the video. It, it's not related to this question, it's yeah. just a step aside. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, any other question? Okay, thank you uh, for your attention.